What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going over part two of our building a hub series. Uh, so we had a part one. If you're tuning in to part two, I recommend watching part one. It is gonna. It pretty much goes into what we're gonna do in this video. Um, it goes over how to choose a country, how to choose an airport, um, basically what to look for in those two things, and then. You know, we ended up choosing an airport, which you can see, which is Oklahoma City, and that's where we're going to pick up today. So I've already opened up the necessary tabs. Um, today we're going up to how to set up waves, how to pick planes, and basically I'm going to tell you how I'm going to set this airport up um, in order to succeed. Uh, there will be most of the um, infrastructure and type things I'm going to omit from this. Um, that's basic things, but I may go into it briefly to show you how I get started. Other than that, we're going to be doing, I pulled up the AS route map tool already. Um, we're going to, I'm going to show you how to evaluate the airplanes, how to choose those. Um, I'm going to show you what, I, what I'm talking about in terms of Oklahoma's location in the United States. And we're going to be uh, basically just setting that up today. And then we're going to uh, I'll probably uh, edit out the wait time in between that and we'll show you how it turns out. Um, or that, or we'll just end up with a part three. Um, this video will probably just focus on setting up ways, picking planes, and then part. Well, I guess we're probably going to need a part three now. Um, part three will probably go over um, evaluating the results. Um, have you successfully succeeded in building your initial, starting your initial hub, and probably after that. Uh, so let's get started for today. So the first thing I wanted to go over is setting up the ways. So what I went. What I'm going to show you, we, we talked about this tool in the last video, but I wanted to be clear about something now that I've started the airline in the game world. So we have, we basically have Oklahoma City as our central. It's the geographic center of the U.S. is somewhere in South Dakota, if I'm correct. Uh, so we're in the, we're basically on the same, on the, we're still we're on the same meridian line of the geographic center of the United States. So in terms of flight time, that gives us a pretty equidistant flight time from Oklahoma City. So that's going to mean that uh, waves are going to be pretty, it's going to be a lot easier to, to set up waves and you're probably going to be able to have them about evenly, uh, The what you're going to be, the amount of planes in each wave is probably going to be about even. Uh, so basically now that we've looked at Oklahoma City and we've decided on that, I want to show you a couple things that I'm going to use to evaluate where I'm going to fly first. So a more up-to-date tool is flight radar. So I'm going to use my flight radar and I'm going to filter to Oklahoma City. And I want to see how many planes go in and out and I want to see where they go. So Oklahoma City, Las Vegas. I know one of the biggest destinations for Oklahoma City is Dallas and Houston, so those are two great places to start. But we want we want to get that east-west traffic going, like we explained in the last video. So that's what we're going to focus on today. We also have Oklahoma City, Los Angeles. Um, we're going to be flying there regardless. Um, basically, all these places kind of dictate to you. Um, Southwest is usually a great indicator because Southwest does a lot of point-to-point -point things. So if Southwest is flying between two places, it generally means there's there's direct demand there. So this is um, flight radar is generally an, a tool for the here and now. It doesn't necessarily dictate, um, it doesn't always work for every world. Um, we're starting in auto, so auto is a more up-to-date world, so this data may be more current than if it was if you were starting in a world like Tempelhof or um, Kitek, for example, that have been around for years. So we can use this tool basically. The next tool you might use is Wikipedia, so you basically would just type in the airport like so into uh, Google. So you would just type in uh, I can't spell. So you basically type this in and then it would pull this up. Now Wikipedia is only is good for average data I guess. Um, so you can kind of see the destinations we're looking at that you might be at a flying top destinations to. Now, Flight Radar will give, these, give you this as well, um, but uh, Wikipedia puts it in a different format in case you don't use Flight Radar. So you can basically see some of the top destinations. 
Um, as you can see, Dallas Fort Worth is the number one, Denver's number two, Atlanta's number three, Houston's four, and blah, so on and so forth. You see where Las Vegas sits there. But basically, like I said, um, we're also looking at, we also want to know if Washington's on here, and Washington is not. So, no. So Washington is not on this list. That is kind of going against my plan, but with Los Angeles being in there, Las Vegas, Washington, Washington National, Washington Dulles, or Baltimore would probably be good airports to start regardless. Um, like I said, Flight Radar is the more up-to-date tool, so we can pull up. Uh, we can actually pull up Oklahoma City here and do something. We actually will get something like this. So Oklahoma City, you can pull up the General tab, and you'll find you'll find the busiest route by flights. So you can see you got Oklahoma to Dallas Fort Worth has about 60 flights. So that's your probably your biggest destination. You can see how many departures it has in a week and how many airports are served. So these are good details to know. You can also look at the airport's schedule for that day and where the routes are. So basically you can see where they fly everything to. So you can see all these different uh, all these different cities here. They don't necessarily these cities aren't necessarily served every day, and they aren't necessarily served all the time. But you can pull it up, and uh, it'll show you who flies it and how many times a week. So you can basically gauge the demand. Um, the more current your world is, the the more the easier this demand is to the better this demand is to use. Uh, if this will load. So you got Miami. You can see how many flights go between Oklahoma City and Miami. So you basically have a weekly schedule there. Um, between Oklahoma City and Los Angeles, you see there's two daily flights. You can see between San Francisco, there's a six times daily flight. Between Oklahoma and Seattle, you can see it's flown every day, but uh, it's flown every day. All right, so it looks like a, it is a seven times a week. It's, so that is flown uh, basically uh, seven days a week. It's a daily flight. You can see how many times it flies to Denver, which may influence your decision on where to fly. Uh, you can check Las Vegas. You can see how often that is flown in the day. So it's you pretty much get the gist of it. It's a good tool to use if you're trying to determine where, to, where you can and can't fly. Um, this might that knowing that data that is definitely going to influence the aircraft choice that we make today. So basically, when it comes to hubs, you can start big or small. Um, in terms of our aircraft choice today, we I was initially thinking A320s, but after looking at that data again. I'm thinking we're probably going to look for, um, I see, a, uh, we're going to go into the Bombardier A220 C series um, of aircraft on this one. Um, either that or we'll stick with the A320s and we'll see how it turns out. I believe that with connections, we can do this. At worst, if things don't go our way, we go between Oklahoma and Dallas and uh, we fly to Chicago. We, we, we pivot, basically. Um, we'll pivot early and I usually leave enough wiggle room for that to happen. Um, that's one of the critical things I would emphasize here is when you're starting, make sure you leave about $1.5 million left somewhere around that zone because um, you have to configure the airplane with a seat and you have to base and you have to and you want to leave room in case you see because usually I start with three days delayed and so you'll see which routes are performing and which ones are not. So you'll be able to pivot uh, if you have that money um, to adjust your schedule appropriately. So what we're looking at here now, I want to show you, is the performance drone aircraft. Now, the reason why we, this is part of the reason why we chose Oklahoma. So Oklahoma between Los, Oklahoma City and Los Angeles, you can see is about two hours and 43 minutes. If I go right across the coast, we can see a very similar flight time of two hours and 35 minutes with the A320. So we are basically in the center of the United States. So I can assume, because this world has dynamic turnaround time, which means turnaround time changes based on aircraft configuration, um, size, airport size, blah, 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 blah. Um, so basically, we can say, okay, so it's going to take me about, I can say, it's going to take me about four to five hours to make this flight. So I probably want waves that are going to be about eight hours apart. So I basically have laid out my uh, two wave schedules here. So one of them is six, the inner one is six, the one that's kind of purple is the six hour, and the one that's on the outside is the eight hour. So we're going to schedule today based on the eight hour schedule. So that's that's going to be our focus. So you want to go, 
we're probably going to start off going between Washington National, Washington Dulles, I mean, connecting Oklahoma to Los Angeles. That's going to be one of our flights today. And we're also going to have a Las Vegas flight. I'm thinking, I'm still thinking, like I said, we're going to go with the 1826. So in evaluating that, so why am I choosing the 8320 series versus the 737 versus the C series, blah, blah, blah. Well, the A320, one, if I go to the back to the, the type family, or actually back to the manufacturers, you'll see that the A320 family has a lot of options here amongst the A320. Um, and these options are, you have a lot of different size options going ranging down to the A318, all the way up to the A321, that seats up to 240, if you use the LR version. Now the 737 has a similar kind of thing. It just doesn't, you just, even the 600, but you just don't get as small as the A318. Now I don't think I'm going to use the 318 because it's not as profitable as um, the other three members of the family. But those, they, that's the reason why I'm going with the A320. Now there, first of all, I think there's enough demand Second, I think there's enough demand between that we're going to be running between our our, um, our hub that uh, I believe we can fill those airplanes. I don't see any. I don't see that being an issue. Um, even if it was, like I said, the pivot would be to go to Dallas. We have plenty of flights between Dallas and Houston, and we can definitely make that work. Um, we can connect Chicago. We can we like I said, we can pivot. That's not a problem. So. Other options that you may consider as a new player is either the A220, which is a really good series. Um, if you really want to know about that airplane, I talk about it um, in my Let's Play series, which I will probably update here soon. But the A220 is a really profitable airplane. If you're going to end up using it, it, the only problem is it doesn't fit into anybody else's type. So if you're using Airbuses, even if you fly the A319 or whatnot, you're going to run into, you can't use this plane um, and carry the same type rating as its own type rating and things like that. So that's why you might run into that problem. You'd have to run a different type. It doesn't, and the type family is not that big. Um, amongst other things, you could use a 7.3. Um, that's up to you. Um, I've gone over this in my new versus used video and why you might choose new versus used on um, the deliveries. Amongst what we're going to talk about next is choosing a used aircraft versus a new airplane. Um, we also have the ERJ series. We do not recommend using the 140 series of airplanes, 135 series. Um, we They're not very profitable for their size. Um, I don't know if this has changed over the years, but uh, last time I heard they're not very profitable. So it's better to just go with the E-Jet series of airplanes. Um, this is a good option. But I don't want. I will not be using it today, mainly on the uh, uh, the chance that um, it may become a part of my fleet, but it's not going to be our mainstay. The A320 will be, even if I did. The E195 is a regional jet versus the A220, and it, I've found that the A220 is a much more profitable airplane in my testing than the E195. Um, unless the route gets to a certain distance, then they become fairly equal. So after looking at those things, that is why you also have the CRJ series, which I don't recommend all that much either. Um, I've used these as well. They're profitable. They will make you money. Um, if you like it, that's up to you. In this case, we're going with jets. Props are also an option. Um, Oklahoma is in proximity to really good, um, some good cities. And uh, when our connections get ramped up, that will probably be our next thing. We'll use regional jets or props. One or the other have some fun with it. Um, so those are going to be mainly what we're doing. So going to the aircraft market, we have to choose, we are going to buy our airplanes now. So we have picked the A220, and I think that we're going to go with something. We want to choose an A220 that hasn't, an A320 that hasn't lost its first bar yet. So we want to get something that's less than two and a half years old, uh, and we want to have it. We want to get a good price for it. So we want to make sure that that price is lower than the price in that you would buy it new, which, believe it or not, is not always given. So we've set our waves to eight hours, and we know where we want to fly to and from, so we want to try to find some A320 lights. I don't want to get, I don't need the Neo version right yet. We don't need the Neo. Um, that is a little bit much for what we're doing, and it's a little, it's going to be a little more expensive than what I want to pay. 
So we have 10 million, and we're going to look at an A320 Neo light, not Neo light, but an A320 200 light. I want to find out how much that's going to cost me. So normally it's going to cost me 2.7 million on a lease. So let's go ahead and close that. So I want to go ahead and filter by probably the newest offers. Well, not the newest offers, but the newest aircraft. Um, this will help us narrow down the price. We want to also type in, we also want to say, oh, you know what? I don't want a Neo. I want a 320. And I want to be specific. I want a 320 light. Save some cash. We don't need the winglets. Uh, we don't need to spend the money on that. We don't really see that much of a benefit. So we're looking at, we already said that that is going to cost us 2.7. So we're looking at a good, this is a good airplane right here. The 200 light. And then we have the, the uh, we have another one here. But these are, these are really close to the, the, the normal cost of the airplane. And then we have, oh, there's a good one. So we got a $2.1 million A320, but that's a 2.7 years. So we really don't want to purchase that because we're, we're operating, and what I'm saying is we're operating under a connection model. We don't have a lot of demand that like New York has between New York and Miami. So we have to work on the, on the idea of having a higher rating than our opponents since that's the basis of our initial uh, model. So we're looking at, so we're definitely going to take this A320. We're going to take this one for sure. And we got to hope nobody outbids us on it because that would suck. But I don't think we're going to have a problem with that. So now that we have a 320, we want to look at, we need to get a couple more of these. Um, I have 7.6 million, so I might go ahead and choose an A321. And, but I want a standard one. I, we're gonna, it's going to cost me more for the 200. Now, an A320, an A321 is going to cost me how much? We want these two airplanes, and then we might be able to save some money. We might be able to go with the A320 and save some cash on the other three. So, an A320 usually costs us $3.3 million, so we're going to get a little more off of an A321 than normal. So, we want to go... This is 2.5. That's a nice one. We're not going to be playing. Okay, we're going to kick this $2.5 million A321. Okay. That's something we get every now and then. Okay. And so now we got two airplanes on that we bid it for. It's going to get, we'll get them in approximately an hour. Um, I want to get two more airplanes, though. So we're going to go to the 320. We're going to go to the 220 and see what we can get. Actually, let's stick with the 319. See if we can find a good, cheap 319. Let's see how much a normal 319 costs first before I start purchasing 319s. Now, remember, we still got to have money. So before you start wondering what I'm doing, we gotta we still gotta have money in order to uh, put the seats in the airplane. So we'll, I'm probably gonna cut that out because that is definitely up to player preference, um, and it doesn't really depend on that much. So we're looking at 2.4 million for a A319. That's a good one. It's a heavy, but it's good. So we'll take that. And probably a good one more, and then we're going to call it. All right, so we just found our last A319. It's about 2.1 years old, so we're waiting about an hour for that. And then we'll find out if we got it. In the meantime, though, we're going to assemble a... We're going to be going... We need to hire some crew. We need to establish some other things that I'm going to do off the video, and I'm going to come back to you uh, once I complete that. Hi right, everybody. So we're back. Um, we got all our planes recently. Um, we got our planes a couple hours ago. And so we're now going to move on to the next stage of scheduling those planes. So this is basically the part where we're going to, I'm going to show you how to set your waves. Um, but first, before going into that, I want to show you a couple things. 
So we've already chosen our our station. So these are the places we're going to fly to. We're going to do Atlanta, Chicago, uh, to Orlando, and Washington, Dulles. Those all are going to go east. They're going to come back, and then we're going to go do Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Phoenix, and we're going to add one more. There should be four. One, two. No, okay. I guess I need to add one more. Let's see. Uh, I guess Denver is okay. Let's do Denver. Matter of fact, let's do Dallas instead. Somebody will probably like Dallas. Or, matter of fact, let's do Houston. All right. So we got our, our tool for our market analysis tool. So we're going to use this to determine what we have. Um, if any competition whatsoever, but we always have competition in the United States. Um, here's our cabin configurations. For the A319s, I went with a 9010 um, using Comfort Plus with a kind of long haul. I'm still doing some, I'm still running some tests from the new seating and pricing system, so we're going to hopefully succeed with this. 110 and 10 in the A220s for our total 120, and then 135 and 15. For 150 on the A321s. Um, these are our service profiles. Um, pretty basic things, pretty basic stuff. Uh, you know, um, good ratings, so not much to talk about there. Other things, I maxed out Ava all the employee salaries for the first week. Um, that'll give us a good mood, um, employee mood, and that'll uh, bump up our rating when we start after the first week here. Um, that should give us enough. Uh, that should give that bump to our rating so that we can act effectively compete with our network with our other carriers in the game. All right, other than that, we're going to go ahead and kick off the scheduling here. The first thing I want to schedule is our A320. I think we're going to send this A320 to a, I think I'm going to put the A321 in this case to Chicago. We'll start with the A321 first. Make, give it. So we know we got a good market in Chicago. Um, so we're going to go ahead and kick that off first. So we'll go from Oklahoma City to Chicago, ORD. Now, since we have decided to do eight-hour waves on this one, we want to make sure to number them appropriately. So it's going to take us – I'm just going to simulate that we were real airlines. So if we were doing this for business traffic, we'd probably want to start – our flights around 4 a.m. so that we can get our business travelers into the uh, probably about 5 a.m. actually so that we can get our our passengers to Chicago and the big business districts early in the morning so uh, here's what we'll do I, I usually do my flight numbers um, in a specific way in uh, the past so it's leaving a hub um, at this we're going to call 5 a.m. the first block, so we're going to put the, we're going to have uh, ones. So this is our first hub. So I'll use one one, and then uh, I schedule. This is organizing your flights with the flight number is important, since this will give you that ability to determine what your flight is doing late in the day. So the first two numbers usually indicate what hub, what hub, and uh, what time. So one is it, Oklahoma City is my main hub. It's the, so it's the number one hub. Number one is the first wave. And then the last two numbers will be um, pretty much as a departure or arrival. In this case, we're going to use even numbers as our departures this time. So 5 a.m. is a departure. 1100 is the first flight. This is to Chicago. Um, we will land in Chicago. And then we will, we have eight hours um, between waves. So the next wave is not until 1300. So... The plane will sit in Chicago until I am ready to take it, um, the next wave. Uh, we can do it in four-hour intervals, theoretically, um, but I won't in this case. So you could do it. Like later, I could cut it in half and do it that way, but not right now. So the next wave is not until 1300, so we will move it so that it fits within the hour turnaround time. And we want it to be pretty close, so that's about good enough right there. And then we'll move on to our next plane, which is our 319. We want to send that guy to 
So we're in Oklahoma City. You want to send that guy to somewhere where I'm not sure we're going to build a plane necessarily. So we know we can get one to Orlando. That's not going to be an issue. So probably to to IAD is where we're going to go. And uh, we'll go at 5 a.m. That's perfect. We'll take 11 o'clock. Oklahoma City, we got our next A319. We'll send this guy to Atlanta. So we're basically doing this. Um, I'm thinking about this um, from a specific perspective. Um, basically, we're scheduling airplanes with the intention of we want to have this, this blue area right here is the maintenance time of the aircraft. So this is basically if you, the more if you have blue in there, that means that's maintenance time that can occur. These two green lines are turnaround time. So because we have dynamic turnaround, an airplane has to turn around before and after its flight. So you have the preparations for the flight. It's all broken down. You have baggage loading. All this stuff is broken down in the turnaround activities. And that all varies based on the size and the type of aircraft, how you have your baggage being loaded. Do you have a jetway? Don't you have a jetway? A lot of different things. And these are the, some of the stuff you consider when scheduling. You also have the maintenance ratio, which is dependent on your maintenance, um, the maintenance uh, company that you chose at the beginning. Um, also, you have the condition of the airplane, which I'll explain in a second. Um, maintenance mainly is the, the amount of blue space that you have. So right now, you want to get this number. It'll start off at 100, like our next, like our A320 is. So let's go back. So our A320 is at 100, but there is no flight schedule in it. Once you schedule a flight, you have something. This number changes. Um, as that number, you want that number to get smaller. You want it to be as close to 100 as you can get it. Um, those are that's very important. Um, you want it that just that means you'll make more money because right now, if I were to start this flight, all of the expenses of that of the all expenses of operating the aircraft go on to this one flight. So you technically lose money uh, depending on the flight. Um, the longer the flight, you know, the more money you make over the time. Blah blah blah. So uh, basically, you want to get that number as close to 100 as you can. Um, as you can see, our next wave is eight hours. So after five, eight, we sch I scheduled a UTC. So uh, this is actually five UTC, not actually so in Oklahoma time. That's like Oklahoma is how many hours ahead? So Oklahoma is actually six hours behind UTC. So this is actually this is actually um. 11 o'clock at night, to be honest. So uh, that's okay. So we, we don't, Airline Sim does not care about landing and departing time. It doesn't matter. Uh, that does That is not factored. So basically what I'm doing is since our turn, our transfer time in Oklahoma City, and I'll pull that up, our transfer time in Oklahoma City is one hour. So that means we need to have a minimum of one hour between this flight landing and the next flight departing. So that's why I'm not, and you usually want to have a little bit of a break between them. Um, so that's why you see me scheduling and stopping at 1130. The next launch will be here. And this is a westbound launch. Now, you can set up waves in a couple of different ways. We're gonna Ours is going to be an east-west kind of wave. So we're going to have flights coming from the east and then go to the west. And the west will come back and then I'll go back to the east and so on and so forth. Um, depending on where you are located, that may or may not be the best thing to do. So if you are, if you were, say, in New York, you might want to do, if you were in New York, again, east-west waves might be beneficial. You might want to take stuff from there and then go to Europe. Um, you might also consider, if you were in, for example, Charlotte, you might do a north-south to start. So you might take some of the traffic from the top and then take, bring it to Charlotte and take it down to Florida. If you're in this, if you're in, Central America, which is one of the benefits, you might move traffic from the United States to South America. Um, these are different types of waves. Again, so this is what I was talking about in the previous video. If you're in Istanbul, take traffic from Europe to the Middle East and Asia. You know, those are kind of things you consider. Um, my co my company in my other world, we go from I, I take traffic from China, to Middle East, and then send it to Australia and New Zealand. So those are different ways you might consider um, moving your waves around. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. We're doing an east-west wave. So the next wave after this is going to go westbound. So depending on how that works, you might have to do make some do some manipulations with the uh, with the schedule. 
So I'm having this guy depart at five as well. And so we will go down to Orlando, stop in Orlando, turn around, come back. Now we want to just get it closer to that turnaround, that good old um, uh, close to 1300. So we'll stop it there. And then, uh, so now we're going to go ahead and pick what planes are going westbound and where. So we got Los Angeles here. So we're probably going to attend the A321 to Los Angeles. Um, that makes the most sense to me. Uh, yeah, so we're probably going to send the A320 to Los Angeles. A321 to Los Angeles. The A320 is probably going to go to Las Vegas. And then the A319 to Phoenix. And the... Um, the other 1819 to uh, probably to wherever the other place it is I chose, which was Houston. So we might go there. So let's see. And we might have to make some scheduling changes depending on how this all works out scheduling wise. So 1300, we are now in. So if I were doing this in eight, eight hour blocks, so I'm going to actually work this out as if I were doing this in four hour intervals. So if I were doing my numbers are going to be in four hour intervals. So if I were to do this in fours, the next one would be nine o'clock would be the nine o'clock launch. So um, that would be two. And then that makes 1303. So we're going to do 11, three. So we're going to do 1300. Still the first, still Oklahoma City. 1300 is the new time. And uh, we'll go ahead and put that in. Oklahoma City, Las Vegas. It's not really that far. And this is. So we now have Oklahoma City, Orlando. Orlando back. And then eight hours would be 21. So that's what we want to put in now. So we want to shoot for 21 here, even though. Yeah, so you want to shoot for 21 here. So put in 17. That's fine. And you notice how our number went down again as we added that next flight. All right, so our next flight here is to Los Angeles. Same time. Now we won't. Now I'll show you a good way to uh, to look at your connections and if there if connections are possible. Actually, we don't need to do that for this. All right, and then we're sending this A319 to Phoenix. Put him there. That's fine. Have some maintenance in between. That's okay. And then Oklahoma. And I think we're going to choose another westbound um, wave. I can't remember what was allowed. I think San Diego was in there. Okay, so we had San Diego... And we had a couple of yeah, Mexico, but we're not going to go down there just yet. So we'll go ahead and choose San Diego for this. All right, now that's our second wave done. Now we now notice we still have about 320% left. We want to maximize these airplanes on this, especially the first couple that you do. So this is why I save the shorter flights for last. So what we'll do is we'll probably open a service to a couple of services here. Um, one to, might open a service to Kansas City, one to Dallas, Dallas, Fort Worth, and we might be able to do another short one. Probably one to Tulsa, which will probably be a good one for the next launch. Uh, so let's get, let's try that. We want to put Tulsa on the 319s. I think we're going to put it on this one. So I need to open a station in Tulsa. I'll need to open a station in DFW. DAL. Because you may just go to both due to scheduling reasons. And then MCI. Okay. So now that we have those, we do a quick check at what the competition is doing. Um, this is how I, I this is how I know I'm going to fill this flight because I'm looking at this guy. Um, he's charging about 170, um, and I can also add this group by flight. We don't 
And then, so we can see that he's charging about 170 and 395. I don't know how many seats he's putting on the market though. And I don't know what his seats are. So I'm going to just charge about that because I'm pretty sure whatever we have is about equal. So I can, I don't know if he's making money or not, but we'll put, a, we'll put ours in the seat there. Um, for Atlanta, that's less than, that's about in between there. So that's fine. We'll apply those prices and settings. We'll do that, this, this, and apply those. Chicago, we will, basically what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll go into the, uh, I'll go into the pricing tool and do all that myself manually. Uh, so we can see that Oklahoma City to Kansas City, we're not seeing good load factors from guys flying that flight right now. Uh, so that that may uh, it kind of indicates to me that it's not a good route to fly. But if I go to Dallas Love, there's nobody there. But if I go to Oklahoma City, Dallas Fort Worth, there's a full flight. So that's definitely something I want to do. There's not gonna be anybody between Oklahoma City and Tulsa. We are. I know why that is. So we're gonna go ahead and open a flight between Oklahoma City and Tulsa using our A319 light with the shorter range we'll go we'll depart at 2100 which is our next wave so eight hours later is 21 again we're going to go to 1500 because if i were to do four hours 17 and then that, that would be uh, 17 would be 14 and that would be 15. so we'll go back to 1500 here and uh, go to tulsa and that should maximize, and then that plane is going to land uh, in 23. Just in, in this particular case, I'm going to uh, do something specific here for this flight. I'm going to have this plane land, I'm going to move it so that it lands with a, in a bank because um, it's a short flight. So I want it to land in a bank. Uh, until I don't have to do that anymore. So I'm going to put it so that it connects to the next eastbound wave. Since it's such a short flight. Um, in a world that's like new, that's new like this, it's important to note how connections work in AS. So depending on which world you're in, some worlds, um, passenger, AS passengers are willing to connect in, uh, in some worlds between 1.5 times and 2 times the route distance. So basically, if, say, a direct flight between Seattle and Minneapolis was 1,000 kilometers, well, packs are willing to connect on a flight that totals out to 1.5 times that distance. That's about what it would be on a newer world, is 1.5. So in Seattle and Minneapolis, if the distance was 1,000, well, they would be willing to, do a, to go on a connection that might be 1,500. So the distance between, say, Seattle and Portland to Minneapolis was 1,200 total. They would be, the packs might book that because of the distance. So the distance would be 1.5. So they're willing to take, on an older world, it might be two times that. So it might be, um, they might fly from Seattle to Oklahoma and then up to Minneapolis, which honestly isn't that much different, uh, isn't that much different than flights distance either. So if that makes sense, um, so basically, any flight that's between, so flying, that's why Oklahoma is such a great connection because it's not really, it's about the same. So if you were to Los Angeles to Washington, you have to go over to Oklahoma anyway. So you would, you're just stopping along the way, which is why these states are very good for connections and not just uh, regular demand or just, they're not just fly, they're not just options that you should overlook. All right, moving on. So we're putting this flight here so that it connects with the uh, 5 o'clock launch in the morning. I want to make sure that this number is good. So I'm going to put this at 359, which should give it plenty of time to connect to the 5. And we got a 125 on our, on our maintenance, which is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, so the next guy we want to do, and that Tulsa flight may have to move over here for maintenance purposes. Um, so the next flight we want to do is a short hop to, uh, I'm going to send the 321 to Dallas, I think. So I want this guy to go to MCI. Um, is there another option for this? Actually, I forgot about Little Rock. That's a good option to go backwards.
So Little Rock, Arkansas is a good one. So I'm going to go ahead and take that. I'm going to use that one in this flight instead. So basically this whole first iteration is just a bunch of tests. Um, you're just trying to see what works and what doesn't. Um, some of these flights may work based on what we're doing right now. Some of them may not. Um, our next wave would be if I were to put them here. So that would put this at uh, 29. So you should track um, four. So it would be. So our next wave would be 5 a.m. So we're not going to be able to do that, obviously. So I'm just going to have to four hours. We put this at 25. So it'd be one o'clock. So if you were to, if I were to leave this here, it would be fine. Um, because the next the next westbound wave would be at one. Um, but in this case, I'm going to put this. Uh, I'm gonna put it across, and uh, that way it connects to something rather than nothing. So I'm gonna make this sure this connects with a decent time. And that should be a good maintenance ratio for him. So then we got our 321, which we want to go to DFW. So we're going to put this in 21. And we're going to do the same thing again. So we'll go ahead and put this at 2. And this should make for a good connection here. And we got a 101 on the A321. And then we got our A320, which does not currently have another flight. Now I have two options. I can either send it to Houston, um, which is Hobby, or I can, we'll have to see how that works first. So we'll, we'll let's see how this goes. And if it doesn't do well, if it doesn't fit in the schedule, we'll change that. We'll pivot on that. It looks like we'll have plenty of maintenance time. Let's see. But we see here's the thing. So we got a 90%. So that's not going to be enough. So as I was mentioning earlier about the condition, with this rating being red and at 90, ultimately that means there's not enough maintenance time to keep your condition up. So what will happen is this, this number will continue to decrease. Now, this number will decrease regardless as the plane goes about its flights. But as soon as it hits its maintenance time, the airplane, this number will return to 100 or it'll, re, it'll get the maintenance up to whatever amount of time that you've allotted. Um, so if you've allotted enough maintenance time in the flight, it will come back up. Uh, so in this case, if we, when this plane gets done with all its flights, when it lands in Houston for the day, it will not have enough time to return to 100%. So that number will continue to decrease until it hits 50, which is when the plane will no longer operate its flights. So that is an issue um, for you as a pilot. That's not an AS issue. Um, so we have a couple of options. I can either leave the HOU flight in, and I kind of want it, so I kind of want to leave it in, or... I can uh, remove it for another flight. Um, that's why we had the Dallas Love flight in there. Uh, but I am not entirely sure. That is a that would be a better flight probably. But I'm thinking I'm going to try to make this work. So because I don't have any planes that land any earlier than 1930, I have an hour where I don't. There's that Oklahoma City flight from Phoenix. So I'm not, I, this is going to be interesting. I can do one of two things here. I can either speed the plane up and try to make the room since it is such a tight uh, schedule. We might be able to do that. That might work. And then we can add a few minutes. So I can add about probably about 48 minutes to it and see if that does it. And that does not do it. So I also have a couple minutes on this end I can move around. So we can make this 20 and then we can do a 55. You got to give it a little bit of time to think. If that doesn't do it, which it doesn't appear that it did, 
I can, because these flights are brand new, I can make some changes to the flight that lands early. Uh, cancel this. Uh, so this flight that lands at 1952 here, I can move this. I can actually speed this up a little bit. And that way I can manipulate this other flight on the back. I can manipulate this flight on the A320 to, uh, to give me that uh, connection that I want. Mainly this is, this is, the, this is the dynamics of the airline sim. You usually want certain connections in certain places. Um, and so you do whatever you got to do to make those happen. On time, we'll get this 46. You usually want to, it's recommended that you leave about a minute between uh, over. And that gives us one on one on the uh, maintenance. So that's what we wanted. So basically, all of our plans are scheduled. That's how you set up a wave right there. So you notice how most of our flights, all of our flights landed between and about an hour and 30 minutes ahead of their time. Um, I'm, I'm capping that because that's where I'm want, I'm probably, this is a temporary world, so no, the airline may not get as big as my other one, but um, it uh, you might get into flying flights between the hours. So I'm thinking that flights are going to start at, say start flights start at 5, um, they're probably going to go for about 2 hours, so you'll probably have waves extending uh, well into the 7s, so it'll probably be about a 2 hour wave maybe depending on how big how, how big our wave gets in that time if this were a long-term world that's the kind of planning you would do uh other than that we're gonna next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our finish our pricing and then i'm basically gonna to this is why you set up performance profiles because it makes it this much easier um so basically i can do this right here and i can say oklahoma city to anywhere uh, i can say anywhere to anywhere using this flight I'm going to say up the prices by 10% on from the current price in economy and business. And then that'll do it for me. I think that's going to be, I think that's what we're going to say we've done it. Uh, we'll see how those prices turn out. Um, like I said, I'm, I usually start my things on a three-day delay. So that's where we're going to go. Basically, that gives me time to be able to see what flights are succeeding, where the get, be able to guess where the connections are coming from, see what flights are failing, and then be able to move, adjust some things before the flights actually depart so I can make some changes. Um, basically, that's what we're going to do. I'll upload this to AS Route Map um, for those who want to see it, if you want to go on, log on there and look at it. Um, I'll put this here for um, basically that. And other than Pricing is done. Make sure, let's go through everything. Uh, make sure we've done all this. Um, you'll be able to see, now you can look in the slot section, you can see when our waves are. So if you go at three, this is when we arrive. You can see all our arrivals here. Um, you can see our departures. Our departures are at 5 a.m. You can see that. That's basically what you want. You got Oklahoma City, boom, 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 to the west. And then you got our next one which is boom, 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 going to the right. Um, Oklahoma City to the left, back to, to the west. And then you got our next wave at 21, back to the east. And uh, shorter flights, shorter, more uh, precise flights there. Uh, so basically, I hope that this helps you set up your hub. Um, we will come back with a part three to go over what we learned and then how to adjust. Um, how to make changes to the hub once after you've begun your first flights. So that'll be the next video after this. Hopefully this helps you. Um, I will keep monitoring this for about the next week or so before the video the next video goes up. So it'll be about a week or two before you see the next part three. So that'll give you plenty of time to uh, hopefully start your own and get your own going. Um, once we will, once we've gotten that done, uh, hopefully the airline will have grown. Hopefully we'll succeed. Um, I haven't I haven't started a new airline from scratch in a long time, so um, we'll see how this goes. I think that covers everything. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be more than happy to answer any of your questions out, down there. Um, hopefully this helps new players get it off the ground or even current players learn a little something. Um, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.